Okay. We go, we're reaching our fourth segment in our exploration of happiness, which again is a warm gun. Yes, it is. An old saying said, Nefesh Bria the Guf Bari. It's a Greek saying. A healthy, a healthy soul lives within a healthy body. So, and we all see, you know, when we don't feel good and so on and so forth, we're not usually happy. But are these just like passing episodes or sometimes it's different? But, you know, overall, overall, health is also a factor in achieving our happiness. But research has shown that mental condition endanger our happiness much more than physical conditions or physical sickness. In those research it was shown that most of the people who are sick with very difficult conditions like for example blindness or arthritis or even even being in a wheelchair will tell you that they are happy. Okay? And in comparison to that only 4% of the people who have some kind of a mental condition would testify upon themselves that they are happy. It's amazing. I mean, you are happy in the, you're healthy in your body, but if your psyche is, is not in tune, so something is wrong here, and you're not happy. In anything that has to do with health, we became so Greek in our, in our and so external in our perception of life that you're always concerned about the physical body but we never pay attention to our mental health. And our mental conditions, which is a mistake. You think that if you're going to run an extra mile, you're going to feel happy. And it's not. Something is, uh, something is deeper than that. Therefore, uh, Let's bring some few points. I'm trying to make it deliberately shorter than usual uh, because I want people to be able to grab something in their hands and to be able to apply it quicker. So you can ask yourself, for example, a few questions to see at what state of mind are you at in terms of your uh, oh, not physical, uh, mental well-being. I'm not saying you're crazy. I'm not saying you're psychotic and so on and so forth, but your mental well-being. Like for example, a person could face, uh, could experience some certain physical discomforts. I don't know, he has a bloated stomach, so it could be gas, it could be something he ate, so on and so forth, you know, so you need to check or you have a headache, you want to make sure it's not blood pressure, you want to make sure it's, could be sinuses, it could be sugar, it could be a whole million different things. You need to check it out. So, but we never take an account of our spiritual Needless to say, I'm sorry, spiritual. Spiritual bichlal altogether, we completely dismiss. But a part of the mental well-being is our spiritual well-being also. You have to understand that. Uh, people who don't feel mentally healthy, I'm not saying it, I'm not, I'm not referring to the DSM uh, you know, disorders there. I'm talking about a state of mind that you ate, a spiritual state of mind, your, your mental state of mind. So how do you check this out? You know, you go to the doctor, which is quite, if you think about it, quite primitive. The way doctors check you today, they put a stethoscope, they listen to you, the same thing as they did, I don't know, 100 and whatever years ago. They take a rubber tomahawk to bang on your knees, ah, oh, okay, okay, I have a headache, okay, take some medicine, go. This, this is, I would expect a little bit more from doctors today and insurance companies. For example, you know, you put a person once a year into a, to a CAT scan, scan the whole entire body, see what's going on there. What's the big deal? Insurance companies, it's all about money, you know, it's a steal. Anyway, so let's see, for example, how do you feel? How do you feel? You feel good? In other words, do you feel, do you feel, uh, it's my sister in Israel, I'll call her later. Uh, 
do you feel uh, unappreciated? Do you, I mean, not unappreciated. You feel like with no value to you, meaningless. The, you don't make a difference to anyone. There's no value to who you are, what you are. Are you most of the time worried or stressed out? You're always worried. Are you always stressed out? That's another question. A third question. Are you always tired and lethargic, not having energy? It's another question. Because people operate on three, four, five hours of sleep, and they are full of energy. And a, people, a person can sleep eight, nine, ten hours, and he's always going to be tired. That's not a physical tiredness. It's a mental state. Something is, something is not working there. Did you lose the excitement or the desire to do things that you enjoyed beforehand? Once upon a time, you used to like to go hiking. You, look, you like to do gardening. You like to, I don't know what people like to do. You like to go to museums. You like to go to the city. What happened to you? You don't do those things anymore. You sit all day long in front of the, of the I don't know, TV screen, and you sit there on your sofa, and you're like, what happened to you? You used to go out. You used to do all the things. That's an indication that you're not doing OK. Again, it doesn't mean that you're crazy. It doesn't mean that you are, uh, you could be clinically depressed or developing, but that doesn't mean it means that right now inside of you, spiritually and, and emotionally, you're not taking right. If you, for example, answered yes out of this four question to at least two of the, of the points that we brought up, it is a red light to you to start taking care of your mental capacity, of your mental state of being. I'm not even talking about spiritual, I'm talking about your mental state of being. Something is not right with what you're doing. In other words, you are not a happy person. A happy person doesn't mean a person on, on, on uh, ecstasy, you know, jumping up and down like, you know. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about a person who is like, who finds value to his life, who thinks that he is valuable. A person who feels that uh, it's not always, it's always stress and we worry about certain things, but not all the time. A person that feels that he has energy, he can do some things. A person that likes not only to do what he did before, but is looking to do even more. If you answer for two of those questions, two, well, you got to do something about it. If you answered on, yes on all four of them, you need to seek immediate help. You need somebody to evaluate you because you're going to be on a path for what they call depression. In other words, your neurotransmitting in the brains are, are misfiring. You don't have enough pleasure in your life. And a pleasure does not mean physical pleasure. It means meaningful pleasure. There's no meaning in your life most of the time because that's why you feel meaningless. You can't bring yourself to do things because there's no energy in you to do things because it's pointless to you. Okay. You should know that that is most likely the... <coughs> I have allergies. The syndrome of people who retire. <coughs> Thank you. People who retire, the most dangerous year, <coughs> and mainly men, in their life is the year after retirement. A person was whatever he was. Important was, I don't know, he, he ran a factory, he was a CEO, he was a CFO, he was CBS, he was whatever he was, you know, he was important. All of a sudden he stops, goes down. He doesn't know. He doesn't, now all of a sudden he's just a regular person. Nobody makes him coffee in the morning. Nobody gives him the mail. He sits there and he's 
lost. It feels meaningless. It feels lack of self-value. He doesn't know. He can't do the things he did before. He never replenished himself. And that's the most dangerous year for your retirement. If you're looking to retire at the age of, let's say, 65, 67, you should start putting in place not only money. Money you should start saving for your retirement when you're 20, when you start working. However, however, you should start putting in place habits and, and, and procedures for your retirement at 65, 67, when you are about 35 years old. So you will acquire this habit, so you'll be able to go, you put them all in place, you line them all up, and when you take something, you add something more, you take something, you add something more. So when you're fully retired, you're fully engaged in life. Now there are people who are in that state of mind all the time, and that's a, yeah, that's why you can have a 25-year-old that has a mentality or a mental state of mind of a 75-year-old that is completely retired and doesn't know what to do with himself and basically looks all the time to see when the time will come to Malach to call him. And all of a sudden he realized with all the money and all the power that he had in the world, with all the money in the world, you cannot bribe Malach the angel of death, to pose and not to take you. So you see that it wasn't money that you should be after, it should be meaning, and that's what you're after in your life. And when you are right now in the state of meaning of contribution, substitute it because it's going to go one day, and you need to be able to replenish it with things, enough stock to put it into, into, your, into your tank so you'll be able to make the journey. I would I take an account of yourself? And again, this is a mental state of mind. This is not a spiritual state of mind. There's no point of talking about spirituality when you are not happy, when you don't have a meaning. If, you're, if you are in a poor mental state of mind, you're going to be in a minus zero state of spiritual uh, awareness. You cannot be spiritual and be down. And that's something to remember. And therefore, they will affect your Avodat Hashem, and you will affect the way you do mitzvot, and affect you do anything in your life. And all of a sudden, everything in life seems meaningless to you. And therefore, guys, don't do it. Take an inventory of your current state of mind and do something about it. And have a very, very happy, meaningful rest of the day.